visited us on 9-11. And then uh, ISIS, Greater Israel is the plan for ISIS. They're creating a fake Sunni caliphate um, to sit on top of the Greater Israel. And I would suggest people look at Moshe Dayan and, you know, um, what's his name? Um, anyway. All right. Very interesting, great... Robert. Very interesting. I got to go here. I appreciate your call. We have exposed Israel being involved with Turkey and NATO and others with ISIS. Uh, but Saudi Arabia is involved as well. So the whole crowd that hates Israel always says that only Israel's running stuff and never anybody else. That's my problem. The globalists are preparing for war with the patriots of America. The hardworking veterans of every race, color, and creed. The patriots, the people that want to keep taxes low, the people that want government to not be corrupt, people that don't want foreign corporations and special interests running our nation. Armored vehicles, paramilitaries, FEMA camps, re-education centers. They even use those terms in official Army manuals. Just type in Army manual admits re-education camps in U.S. It's declassified. The babies being sold is public. The cancer viruses and the vaccine is public. They admit 100 plus million people got cancer from the polio vaccine. Just type that in. You'll read CDC documents from the 80s. 100 million people got cancer. It isn't a game. It isn't a joke. These people mean business. And you ask, why do they then hate the military if the military has empowered this new world order? Because the age of man's over. The new technocracy's here. We're being phased out. The elite don't need us anymore in their view. Well, guess what? We need us, and we don't want to die fighting with each other over what color we are. We want to unify and build a better world. Doesn't mean we're perfect, but we got goodwill for humanity. And another sour, mentally ill, probably narcissistic, big baby, just like the roof guy, has gone in on video and shot two white people dramatically. And yes, of course it could be staged. The globalists stage all sorts of stuff. I don't know. All I know is they're coming after the guns, blaming us all collectively for the Second Amendment, and it's a load of baloney. And we need to explain and push back that gun crime is down despite the fact other crime is going up because guns are scaring violent criminals. And all hell starting to break loose as the economy melts down. We need our guns now more than ever. And the globalists know full well if they actually try to implement all these executive actions that are clearly unconstitutional, nakedly tyrannical by Obama, it's going to start an event. And that's why they're pushing us and baiting us. And that's why I've said and been called a traitor by some of the infiltrated militia groups that I believe if gun confiscation starts... At first, at least, we need to not get in firefights with the idiots that come to take the guns because they want to start a civil war. If we can control ourselves and not get in a civil war when they come to take the guns, which they're already doing to veterans and others, it'll be such a political backlash that things will change. State governments will line up and say no. Then the feds will have to invade, and then we'll have governmental legitimacy and leaders like 1776 in front of us if they really want to have a civil war to win it and then to reconstitute the republic. The plans to bring down the country. I'm going to say this before you shoot your mouth off about killing cops and military that come to take the guns you ought to be thinking about ways to hit them with information now so they have a debate first and won't take part in it. And believe me they're already having that debate but it's easy to sit around and talk about civil war all day and we're going to shoot anybody that does this or that. And the folks that talk about that all day, they're going to be hiding or they're working for the other side when this thing kicks off. I'll say this, I'm not going to any re-education camp and neither is my family. And that's all I got to say, folks. I'm not going to sit here and shoot my mouth off. To prepare for peace and to secure peace, you must prepare for war. And everything we do is an info war. That's my role. And yes, people have listened and folks have spoken out. And the public is armed to the teeth.
And I just want to say this again. If they start persecuting us and physically trying to drag folks off, just remember who's really responsible. It's the big bank heads, the big foundation heads. They're the enemy. They run it all. They're the ones that did it. You will not hurt them killing their minions. They want to destroy the U.S. military and police in the first wave. Normally in a war, you'd want to degrade their forces, and you may have to just to, to survive and to make them go into an armored-type um, situation where they hunker down. But what will really make the New World Order stop is if their own people at the top get in trouble. And I don't mean Obama. Don't turn him into some type of martyr. But if they launch all this stuff, the people running the show, the actual bureaucrats, the actual corporate heads, they're the enemy. And what scares me more than anything, what concerns me more than anything, I wouldn't really call it even fear, what makes me brace is the actual head people are resigning and leaving the last three, four years and moving out and hiding out and changing their names. Because they know that. They know we're coming for them if they actually pull all this. And it's not something because I want to come for people or I want any of this to happen. But you hurt us. You put our people in camps. You kill us. I'll quote Iron Maiden. You fire your musket, but I'm going to run you through. And I don't need guns to get that done. And I'm not talking about me individually. This spirit is going to tear you into pieces once you start a fight with it. And they know that, actually. They want to kill freedom so bad, they're willing to actually go up against the most vicious armed people the world's ever seen. Because they're evil. Let's go to Buckley in Missouri. Buckley, welcome. Thank you for holding. You're on the air. Thank you for having me, Alex. Apparently, I must not be the only uh, Prison Planet subscriber or regular listener to the show because I've tried for two years to get through. To talk to you. Well, well, you're here, and thank you for putting up with me. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, earlier you just mentioned uh, the term uh, control globalist media. Perfect. Uh, dinosaur media, you mentioned that uh, a few minutes ago. But uh, a couple weeks ago, and I'm giving you credit for coining this term, uh, you said weaponized media. That's my favorite. That's perfect. It, it is weaponized right. media. I mean, they are sworn enemies of the people. I mean, the, the folks running this want to kill us. And you were right earlier when you said the weaponized media could, if they could get away with it, they would never report that this shooter was on pharmaceutical lobotomy drugs. That's right. Now, I was born February 10th, the day before you were, plus 20 years. So I've got 20 years and a day on you. I know that uh, you choose your own bumper music. I've heard you say that before. But I'd like to quote, uh, if you have time, the lyrics of a song written and published by um, the late, great Francis Vincent Zappa in 1973. Oh, I love Frank Zappa. Boy, was he ahead of his time. Go ahead. He was. He was. Um, the, the song uh, published on, it was on the Overnight Sensation album, 1973. The title of the song is I Am the Slime. Here's how it goes. I am gross and perverted. I'm obsessed and deranged. I have existed for years, but very little has changed. I'm the tool of the government and industry, too, for I am destined to rule and regulate you. I may be vile and pernicious, but you can't look away. I make you think I'm delicious with the stuff that I say. I'm the best you can get. Have you guessed me yet? I'm a slime who's in out from your TV set. You will obey me while I leave you. Eat the garbage that I feed you. Until the day that we don't need you, don't go for help. No one will heed you. Your mind is totally controlled. It has been stuffed into my mold. And you will do as you were told until the rights to you are sold. That's right, folks. Don't touch that dial. Well, I am the slime from the video. Who's in along on the living room floor? I you know what? I love that song. And, and my problem is the, I, I do cho choose like 98% of the bumper music. And then so many times I write down songs I want to play. I've had Frank Zappa's wife on. Uh, I think I had Dweezil on, too. Yeah, they're listeners, his son. And I wanted to play that then. Just never got around to it. So I for what's the name of that song again? Uh, I Am the Slime. It was on the Overnight Sensation album, 1973. We're going to get the I Am the Slime. Try to play that at the bottom of the hour for you if we're able to do it with that particular uh, lyrics piece. Yeah, his dad was a chemical engineer. He was super smart in his own right. Way ahead of his time, transcending the left-right paradigm. 
And, uh, you know, died of cancer very, very young. They say the good die young. Bob Marley died of cancer young. And it's just a real bummer. You got to wonder. I mean, we know they killed John Lennon. I mean, I know for a fact. But the stuff I was told, and then this is I am the slime, but we're going to come back with the lyrics later. The things I've been told about uh, John Lennon and what happened to him, I'm not allowed to tell anybody. And that's part of being a journalist is you get told really dangerous, really scary stuff. And then you're not allowed to talk about it. And, I, you know, I don't blame people that know all this for not speaking out, though, because, you know, when the government sits in your living room and tells you if you talk about it, they're going to kill you, and they've already killed people close to you, you have a tendency to listen to them. You wonder why so many wives and people like Gary Webb that was shot twice in the head, he was killed. He told people they're after me, they're following me. He had his book coming out. I was talking to him. He was vindicated. And they said, you're not going to vindicate Jack Crap. We're going to come to your house and... Have you write out a deal that, you know, a suicide note or we're going to kill your family? And then they go to your wife and threaten her. And, you know, that's the thing that happened with uh, Michael Hastings. You know, his wife, Biggs, was at the funeral. She said, oh, go after him. They killed him. It's horrible. A little bit later, she went on Pierce Morgan and said, you know, no, it was all a big accident. So if they car bomb me and my family start saying I, it was an accident. No, it's not. We'll be right back. ABC News, CNN, they're all reporting the gunman has now died after a self-inflicted gunshot wound. We're going to be going over all of that. We're going to continue with your phone calls. We have a special guest who was down here visiting from Canada uh, who has a lot of commentary on the controlled leftist paradigm and feminism. She'll be popping in a studio with us as well. I want to go to as many of your phone calls as I can before the broadcast ends. Like Bill in Tennessee, I love people that disagree with me. He says, Alex Jones predictions not happening. He's a WBCR listener. I may have to go to him in overdrive because there's other folks that have been holding longer, but we'll see what happens. And I love how most of what we've said has come true, unfortunately. We've been able to hold back some stuff, you know, like I'm, they're going to register all your guns and then try to ban semi-autos and their bills fail by like two or three votes and people go, who wants my guns? The prediction didn't come true or, you know, this bubble could go any minute and then it doesn't go and then it's a year later it starts to go. I mean, the CBO is in the news today, Congressional Budget Office, saying that it's unsustainable debt. That's in the Chicago Tribune. That's all we're saying. I mean, I don't know when the time bomb's going to go off, but it's crazy. There's hundreds of times the, the global debt with derivatives that we actually have money. People say, oh, really? You know, fear mongering. So I want to go to him just to find out what the predictions are that didn't come true. You know, people call predictions. What I'm saying I believe is coming if we don't stop it. And then we're here trying to put the fire out. And they're going, I thought you said it would burn the house down. Only part of the house is burned. We've got fire hoses trying to put out. We're like, we know, we know. We're saying if we don't stop all this. I mean, I told you they'd weaponize drones. It's in the news today. I told you they'd try to pass laws banning GMO labeling. It, it's, it, look, I know their agenda. I know what their plan is. I'm not perfect. I'm trying to stop it. I'm trying to get you involved to take action. So I can't wait till we talk to that caller. I want to go to Doug and others here in a moment. Uh, briefly, I've not been talking enough lately about Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2. There's no other iodine like it. It's absolutely pure. It comes from a deep earth sourced, not stuff that has to be processed out of seaweed. It is in pure form, and it just goes through grabbing bad halogens in your body and dragging them out. It blocks it in some of the glands, like the thyroid, so the bad halogens like fluoride and chlorine that is just filling our environment, can't get into it, and massive energy increases, massive libido increases. My skin is so much healthier. It really is amazing. But it can have some serious effects if your thyroid's already in trouble and stuff. You need to talk to a physician before you do this or before you take larger dosages of it. If you don't have iodine, you'll die. And most of it's contaminated or not pure and can't be absorbed. 
Uh, nascent supposedly can be absorbed.